The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN 906 AM. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. Quite the Fed day yesterday, folks. We got a little bit of a pullback today this morning. You're looking at an S&P approaching nine tenths percent in the red right now. You're trading at 42.57. We got some tough earnings out there. Shopify, Wayfair, Etsy, all down dramatically with a couple on the good side as well. You get the NASDAQ 100. You're down more than a full percent, negative 1.2 percent right now, dwarfed by the rally we had yesterday, man. 75 basis points off the table for right now, but 50 basis points on the table looks like for at least the next couple of meetings. 13,374 in the NASDAQ 100. You were trading with a 12,000 handle yesterday when Chairman Powell began that press conference. 12,938. Remarkable acceleration to the upside. Dow right now negative by 236 points. The Russell negative by 17. How about crude? It's not stopping, folks. We got a 110 handle on crude. Remarkable acceleration. Uh, we're up about 10 bucks from where we were early in the week on Monday, trading at $100.36. We're trading at $110.17. You take a look at the daily on crude. I mean, next stop, 115 potentially. You're talking about the highs of March 24th, 116.64. Had a great conversation with our man Teddy Kegstat yesterday. Uh, Teddy's got some lofty numbers for that crude number out there, folks. He's been calling it pretty well, to say the least, for about the last year, man. Uh, crude, 110 this morning, up 2.3%. You get the gold contract surging higher yesterday with gold. Putting it back on the 15 minute. There's your acceleration yesterday, continuing the run today. You're up at 1907. You started the acceleration at about 1865 yesterday. So you're talking about $40 from where we were yesterday around Fed decision time. And we jumped to the all important notes and bonds. Now, what's interesting here is we're sitting right at about 2.97%. I mean, that's where we were sitting at Tuesday. Right, so all the expectations, yields pretty much sitting where we are. Yeah, we got quite an acceleration to the upside. But in terms of the context of where the tenure has been, yes, we saw a slight dip with lower yields yesterday. That would make sense with 75 basis points seeming to be off the table. Um, the exact verbiage will pull up, but it was something that they were not actively considering. Something to that degree, Chairman Powell said, that sent the markets higher, that sent yields lower, that started the whole run yesterday from about 2.30 till 4 p.m. Eastern time. And we jump over to the volatility index. Yesterday, we got a 24 handle. Today, still a pretty muted level of 26.22 in this market. Even with the S&Ps off about 1% right now, you're talking about uh, volatility everywhere, folks, in this market. All right, let's jump around to some of the headlines I got pulled up. We'll kick it off with the Fed. Hikes rates half a point as Powell signals similar moves ahead. Largest upward move since 2000. Stocks rally as Powell pushes back on 75 basis point Fed move was the headline. And that was the headline that sent things accelerating, folks. Uh, inflation is much too high and we understand the hardship it is causing and we are moving expeditiously to bring it back down. Powell said after the decision in his first per yeah, in-person press conference, first time they had an in-person press conference uh, since the pandemic began. He added that there was a broad sense on the committee that additional 50 basis point increases should be on the table. You should say for at least, you should say for at least, because we don't know what's happening three meetings from night, right now. They're on the table for the next couple of meetings. Everything is theoretically on the table, which is so confounding about what's going on here. Um, it will begin allowing its holdings of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities to decline in June at an initial combined monthly pace of 47.5 billion stepping up over three months to 95 billion now they got nine trillion dollars on their balance sheet folks even at 95 even at 95 billion dollars a month 
it's almost like 10 years. What's it, eight years, nine years, 10 years, something like that. They could let $100 billion roll off their balance sheet every single month, and it would take like eight years of continuous action to allow their balance sheet to unwind to a zero level. Just to put in context of how big that balance sheet actually is, and there's the exact verbiage, not something that the committee is actively considering when talking about 75 basis points. That lit the fire under the market, man, and it did not stop till the closing bell. We got some negative action overnight. And as I mentioned, we got some tough earnings for some of those retail stocks, Shopify, Wayfair, Etsy, all down double digits, I believe. We'll jump over to them in a moment. The increase for the federal funds rate, now it is a target of 0.75 to 1%. I believe it was, yeah, it was quarter percent to 50 was the one that follows the quarter point hike they got in March that ended two years of near zero rates to help cushion the U.S. economy against the initial blow from COVID-19. Uh, I'm jumping to an opinion piece. Okay, this is an opinion piece. John authors, uh, not familiar with this gentleman, but I, I'm jiving with a lot of his opinion pieces that he's putting out lately on Bloomberg. Powell won't welcome being seen as dovish. It'll be interesting to see what kind of Fed speak we get over the next few days. Uh, over the next few weeks, right? Uh, the quiet period's over. You're going to have some of those Fed governors that might think that they should be bringing it with a little bit more heat than 50 basis point. Uh, they might be coming and they might be speaking and beware of that. And maybe that's a little bit of a pullback this morning, folks. Uh, they're talking about last night in the Tiger's Den. Uh, I saw our man Dave White was talking about it. Gotta love a bear market rally. Whether we're in that bear market or not, folks, the volatility in this market is astounding, to say the least. And that is actually one of the most worrisome things, in my opinion. Strong markets don't have the type of volatility upwards and downwards that we're experiencing recently. I mean, you're talking about swings. We all know it, right? But you talk about the, the acceleration that we had on Monday to a low of 4,056. We are 200 points above that price level on Thursday action right now. 200 points above that price action right now on the S&Ps, let alone the daily turnarounds you got. Yesterday, you get the acceleration higher uh, in a, over a period of two days from February 21st, excuse me, April 21st to 22nd. You're talking about trading from 4509 down to 42. 47, 250 plus points. And two days later, you're trading at 4150, 350 S&P points. When the market cannot accurately predict where price discovery should result in to the tune that you are trading five to 10% folks almost. I mean, look at where we are. You're talking about trading down 10% from 4,500 down to 4,050 almost, it's almost to a T, 450 S&P points over the span of April 21st to May 2nd. And since then, we have now bounced almost 5%. Be wary of markets that are this volatile, folks. They do not go straight down in a bear market. I'm not saying that's gonna happen. But getting these types of rallies, I mean, even yesterday, right? 75 basis points is off the table. So we jump back to the article I was taking a look at here. Uh, the market's huge reaction to 75 basis point hikes coming off the table doesn't get the Fed where it wants to go. I was listening to some analysis this morning early on Bloomberg, and they were talking about, uh, they were talking about, you know what? That's great, that maybe they don't hike 75 basis points, but that might mean that they have to bring it with more 50 basis points cuts, right? I mean, the argument for 75 basis points is you bring it fast, you bring it hard right now, you get the pain over with, you shock the market a little bit, and you bring it down. If they don't do that, maybe it stretches a little bit longer. Lots to talk about, folks. We'll be right back with our man, Kevin Hanks. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
first-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. we got the S&Ps right now, negative by 38 points. i got a chart of the S&Ps up here. We're trading at 42.57. You're off 38 points on the session right now, but you are still more than 100 points above where you were trading at at about 2.30 p.m. Eastern time yesterday. Quite the volatility. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hanks, folks. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time on the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV. Fast market with your hosts, Kevin Hanks, Tom White. And Kevin, I think we got a fast market, buddy. What's going on? Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, the, you know, these are some fun days. Uh, big moves, both up and down. So uh, I thought, yet, yeah, you know, Jerome Powell is basically set out a course to land this economy out of inflation without affecting unemployment or raising unemployment. So eventually what he's going to do, Tommy, is hit a bullet with a bullet. And so navigating this economy through that is going to be the, you know, if he's able to do that, it'll be something that books are written about and master's thesis are written on. And this one will go down in the history books, Tommy. Uh, that's an if. That's quite an if. And he's 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 doing a phenomenal job right now, man. With the market at forty two fifty three, Kevin, everything we're dealing with, um, quite the acceleration last year. You could say the market got a little bit ahead of itself with the price action, considering the variables and obstacles that we're going to encounter this year to get inflation under control. Uh, but man, we hike with fifty basis points. The Fed chairman says fifty basis points is probably at least on the table, maybe coming for the next couple meetings, and the market rallies 150 S&P points, man. Uh, remarkable. Today, you give a little bit of it back. I think we all know that we got a two-way market, man, volatility in spades. How about the VIX, Kevin? Um, really pulling back and still pretty lofty, um, low levels this morning. Even with the S&P down almost 1%, we're sitting at about 26. We were at 36, Kevin, to start the week, what's your take on the VIX as we get over uh, a Fed meeting of 50 basis points right now? Well, your viewers have to understand that 26, where we sit right now, is still extremely elevated. So we're still in a 
an environment of higher implied volatility. So the fact that it was 36, that was peak uncertainty, peak panic about the Fed meeting. And and let's face it, last Friday in the in the depths of a pretty substantial sell off. So not really surprising that it's come down off those levels. You look at a long term history of the VIX. It can go high or higher than that, but it doesn't stay there very long, Tommy. So mid twenties uh, feels a little better, even though make no mistake, it, it's down significantly from where it was, but it's still elevated. As an options trader, Kevin, I'm going to stay on the VIX for a second. I got a five-year weekly up on the Thinkorswim platform right now on the VIX. I almost can't believe it myself that I have, number one, I got the VIX chopping around at like $8.50 in 2017. But you back it up to even the beginning of 2020, Kevin, I have an 11 handle on the VIX. As an options trader, can you just speak a little bit to, as an options trader, as volatility, how difficult things can be sometimes when you had a VIX trading at 8, 9, 10, 11 even to kick off 2020 versus the type of premiums you deal with when you have a VIX that's elevated even 16, 17, 20, 25? Yeah, there is a big difference between an 11 VIX and a 15 or a 20 VIX. Uh, implied volatilities are, you know, it's a big factor in the price of an option is the overall implied volatility of that option. And that can add premium to a name or take premium out of a an option really quickly. I had someone ask me, Tommy, in one of my speaking events, what's the number one thing I should learn about trading options? What's the most important thing? And I, my answer was become proficient at implied volatility. Know when it's high know when it's low, know what the difference is, and know what the right strategy is to put on when volatility is high and volatility is low. Because buying low and selling high works in stocks, it works in futures, but it also works in terms of implied volatility, Tommy. It's pretty cool, man. And one great way to do that, folks, is checking out Fast Market with your man Kevin Hinks every trading day at 12 noon Eastern time. With that in mind, Kevin, man, we got some stocks moving. Shopify, Etsy, Wayfair, right? All getting hit this morning. Uh, what are you guys going to be talking about coming up today at 12, Kevin? Well, we got some good names today. The number one we'll talk about is Square or now Block. And we'll look at that. They have earnings today after the bell. Uh, we, you know, we, we, we're looking at DoorDash. We're looking at uh, Fubo TV. Uh, like Folio likes to talk about Fubo TV. We're in the final stages, but definitely Block is one we'll talk about today. We can look at DraftKings. We can look at Under Armour with earnings tomorrow morning. So we got a lot of choices. We'll lead the show with Block and then work from there, Tommy. We're in the final decision making process now. I like it, man. Square, block, back from 289. You're sitting at, uh, closed at 106. You're down a little bit overnight to about 104. DraftKings, always on my radar a little bit. Online gambling, uh, here to stay, to say the least. But, man, I've heard you guys talk about on Fast Market. You made some great points. Can you give us a little teaser, even if you don't talk about it, Kevin? Because I know DraftKings, online gaming, uh, gambling, not even gaming, You've talked about the costs, and I've heard you talk about this on Fast Market, talking about DraftKings, talking about an industry that is so at the beginning of some of these companies having to spend. Can you give us a little taste of what your opinion is on DraftKings? We're sitting at 15 bucks, down from 74 last year, but uh, why is the market putting it so low right now, in your opinion, Kevin? Yeah, well, because it's a couple things. Number one, yeah, you look at a stock that was 74, and now it's 15, down, up from 13. You're like, what? What happened? Well, what's going on? Well, number one, they don't make money yet, and the com and the market has punished companies that don't make money. Number two, what you're seeing in this space, online gambling, is competition. And so it's almost a race to the bottom in terms of how much it's going to cost you to bring in a new customer. So not that these companies won't do well eventually, and not that there won't be enough market share to handle DraftKings and Penn National Gaming, but sure. the competition is going to be fierce. And like in and companies, you know, who wins in competition is usually the consumer in terms of pricing, Tommy. Yeah, it's it's one I try and wrap my head around, man. You guys make some great points on the program. Um, just a remarkable pullback as an industry is exploding right now, but you make some great points, man. As these states come online, I mean, Florida's not quite there yet. I can't imagine 
Uh, Florida's a gambling mecca, man. When online gambling comes prevalent in Florida, they're going to be spending some cash along with most states across the U.S., uh, but DraftKings right now trading at 1573. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the time. As always, man, we look forward to the show at 12 today. You have a great day and have a great weekend, man. We'll talk to you next Tuesday and we'll be watching at 12 today, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great weekend. You too, man. Folks, tune in every trading day. You heard the stocks they're going to be talking about, man. Square, some of these payment processors, whoo-wee, 289. And this thing chopped around in the 200s, folks, for almost the whole calendar year last year. Yeah, really the final quarter, things got out of hand in terms of accelerating from 266. It's a one-way trip down to pretty much where we're trading at right now. You make a low in February of 82 bucks. We're sitting at 106. We make a low of 93. That is the low this week, folks, of where we were. Going to be an interesting open. We got the S&Ps down 42 points. You got the NASDAQ right now down 1.4%. For some context here, though, we are well off of where we were yesterday, folks, on a Fibonacci basis level. The 382, you're still talking about 50 points of where we're away from right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the opening bell. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you're looking at an S&P trading down 44 points. That's more than 1% on the open, 4251. As I referenced, though, you take the acceleration just from the spike we had 
on the Fed decision last night, you're talking about a 382 of about 42, 43. You make it back to the 618, folks. You're talking about right where we were at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Interesting action. Only 45 points of where we're trading at away from right now. Uh, that's a nothing move in these markets, man. NASDAQ 100 down 1.4%, 13,333. The Dow off 295. Russell right now off 1.2% as well. I'm going to jump over to the 10-year, man. You talk about an acceleration. We're back above 3%, folks, just like that, 3.01%. Kicked off the program, I believe, and we were at 2.97%. And that doesn't even the count the acceleration that we just got starting at 8.30, where you were at, excuse me, 119.01. You're down more than a full half a point right now on the 10-year. And what's remarkable is, with all the acceleration of the press conference at 2.30, you're coming back down to the lows of price and the highs of yield. What happened to the Fed taking 75 basis points off the table in the market rejoicing that yields might not have to be pushed as high as possible as the market was considering? Pay attention to what's going on in the 10-year, folks. Pay attention to what's going on in the yields. Uh, could have been quite a short squeeze yesterday. Uh, the market, for my dad's term, it can be pretty deviant at times, folks. And... You're seeing quite the acceleration to negative prices, man. And do not discount the ability for the market to accelerate lower and higher and take it all back in the span of a day, folks. The volatility we have in two-way market right now going on is, as I've been saying, it one of the most worrisome things about this market. Because strong markets do not see the type of uncertainty that this market is exhibiting. The markets hate uncertainty, folks. And if you're so uncertain that you can't figure out where to price an index like the S&P to 2 to 3% on a daily basis, be aware of how that may play out when the market is trying to price that continuously. As the Fed has now said, 50 basis points, next meeting, 50 basis points, probably the meeting after that. And I would say that's at least where they begin. Yeah, they took 75 basis points off the table. I mean, come on, 75 basis points. We're talking 50 at the next couple of meetings at least. All right, let's jump around to what else we got going on. And we'll start things off. Why not? We'll start it off with Twitter. Don't even have a headline up there, but I'm seeing headlines that Elon will serve as temporary CEO of Twitter. Uh, that's Tesla. Tesla down a little bit with the market right now. Twitter up 2.9%. Now, Twitter securing another $7 billion, I think, from friends and investors. Uh, Larry Ellison out there putting a billion dollars in. Sequoia putting $800 million. The interesting thing about Ellison is uh, he invested in Twitter a long time ago, man. I, I can't. I, I should pull up the exact date. He's a board member on there, and he just made so much cash from his investment in Twitter that not a big deal, probably, as the Oracle founder uh, puts a billion dollars, I think, from his foundation is what I saw, something like that. You know, he's a believer in Elon. Not surprising that he teams up there. The market liking that, though, that they've secured that financing, the deal looking like more of a possibility. You pop from 49, you're up to almost 51 with the market cascading. NASDAQ down 1.9% below the 382. Watch out, folks. All right, let's jump around to some of the stocks that are trading. We'll kick it off with Shopify. Now, here's what I'll say, folks. Interesting. We had some issues with our website, tfnn.com, yesterday. Uh, I think they've worked themselves out. I know that some people just, it was it was sporadic. We were, I was able to pull it up. One of the computers at the office was not able to pull it up. Uh, people in New Hampshire had a problem. Somebody overseas had a problem. Somebody had problems on mobile. Uh we are a Shopify website. That is the platform we use. I joked in the den, indicative of Shopify earnings coming down the line. It was a joke completely, but they had some tough numbers, man. Down 13%. We'll see how they open. They have a $2.1 billion acquisition of a logistics startup in there as well. Earnings, 20 cents a share. Wall, Wall Street was looking for 63 cents. Revenue grew 22% to $1.2 billion. The market was looking for $1.24 billion. Uh, they also announced the plans to acquire Deliver, a San Francisco-based startup that provides fulfillment services to merchants selling their wares across Amazon, Walmart, eBay, and other marketplaces. Shopify is all about fulfillment services, folks. A lot of the companies, right, small businesses that use their platform, of course, they're shipping products. Uh, being able to offer a delivery promise and fast fulfillment across all these channels boosts conversion. Uh, yeah, let's check out the chart, though, man. You talk about a fall from the heavens. Down 
15.5%, and that is after popping uh, almost $15 from that flash low. We got a 395 handle print on the open for Shopify shares down 15%. It's a great platform to work with, folks. It is. But the multiples, they got ahead of themselves, way ahead of themselves, I would say. Uh, and yeah, that's that's I mean, you're back to let's let's back it up. Yeah, I think you're back to 20. Is it just 2020? No, I think you. Yeah. 2019 prices for Shopify. Now we jump over to Wayfair, man. I believe you're back to whoo down 17 percent i was going to say back to 2017 yeah i pulled this up earlier you're far below 2017 we were trading at 85 bucks you could have bought this stock if almost five years ago and you'd be down let's back it up even further how far back does 75 go on this thing yeah you got above that level in june of 2017 so almost five years exactly on Wayfair and Etsy as well with the max pain situation, man, you're down 15% on Etsy as well. You're back to the 786 of the entire COVID run. Now, Etsy had quite the acceleration. You're only back to prices you were trading at in about June of 2020. But when you do all three of them at once, man, Shopify, Wayfair, Etsy, all down dramatically, tough go around completely for some of those companies that escalated so high in during the pandemic. We jump over to Square. As Kevin said, they got their numbers after the bell. We'll call them block now. Giving back some of the gains of yesterday, we were up to above 106. Today, you're down 3.6% as the market, taking a little bit of a hit, to say the least. All right, jumping around. We talked about Shopify. To get into the Wayfair numbers, losing customers and money. Not what you want to hear, man. And the CFO, yeah, he's retiring as well. He's saying, I'm out of here, man. Uh, Wayfair, current, it's count of active customers declined 23.4% from a year ago. That is not how growth companies work, folks, okay? What's so remarkable is you see the companies like Netflix get absolutely punished, right? Because what, they barely lost anybody after growing monumentally during the pandemic? Well, here's the company Wayfair that they just they couldn't even hold on to anything. They lost 23.4% of their customers from a year ago. The CFO stepping down. They're losing money. My dad's been talking about Wayfair for a while. They are very expensive, folks. Um, I've not bought anything myself from there. I mean, they are a very expensive online site. Orders per customer totaled 1.87 versus 1.98. So orders per customer are down, all right? Active customers down to 25.4 million. Orders for repeat customers fell from 2021, 20, totaling 8.1 million, 26% lower than a year ago. Active customers represent shoppers who purchase at least one directly, one item directly from Wayfair in the preceding 12-month period. All you have to do is purchase something in the last 12 months, and they call you an active customer. And they're still losing almost one out of four customers. <whistles> Watch out for that one, folks. That's about as bad as it can get, in my opinion. Uh, you're down 15%. You jump over to the Analyze tab. You're talking about a company right now valued at $8 billion. Be careful, folks, on this equity especially. That's a tough one. Uh, $8 billion is still a lot of market cap for a company that is just bleeding customers at every opportunity. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps negative 47. We got volatility, man. We got a lot to go over still. I'll be right back in three minutes. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps negative by 48 points right now. You're sitting right near that 382 of the acceleration we had yesterday. We dip below that level. We touch a low of 42.39 in the S&Ps. You're down 1.1%. NASDAQ 100, you're down 1.75% below the 382 of the full acceleration we had. You're talking about a Dow right now. Let's take that Fibonacci number off there. Let's look at where we are in terms of the run we had higher yesterday. You start at a price point of about 32,950. We almost touched that 3A2 as well. We'll see how the day goes, man. The Russell getting hit down 1.4% as well. Since we're doing it on the indices, let's see where Fibonacci wise. We're talking about from the run we had yesterday. We make it to a high of 1951. They're all sitting right near that 3A2, man. Uh, 1918 in the Russell. All right. So we're past the Fed. Don't get too complacent, folks, because tomorrow's the non-farm payroll number. April's job report expected to show solid gains in payrolls, intense labor demand, risk sparking further wage increases. Pay attention to those wages tomorrow, man. Um, you're seeing the volatility potential today. My expectation is it's going to continue for some time right now. Unemployment rate probably fell to 3.5% in April. That would be the lowest reading since the 60s. Uh, many economists expect it to keep declining. The reason? Red hot labor demand doesn't appear to be cooling anytime soon. Job openings, jolts, right? What are we up to? 11.5 million? I think I saw an estimate 4.5 million people quit their job in March. Good luck paying for human capital when you have the unemployment rate at 3.5 percent you got 4.5 million people quitting their job in the month of, Mar month of march uh calculations by bloomberg economics suggest it wouldn't take much to get the jobless rate to three percent or lower by december that could pan out assuming that both the labor force participation rate rises to 62.9 percent from the current 62.4 and the number of employed americans increases by an average of 350,000 per month. That's not much, folks, okay? In the economy we're in, when you're talking about non-farm payrolls, jobs added, 350,000 per month with the labor force participation rate increasing by half a percent by December, not much at all. We could see the unemployment rate fall quite a lot further to 3%, perhaps even lower. That's Chief, uh, Chief Economist at ZipRecruiter, a uh, huge job. Website out there, and you see the job openings, man, 11.5 million. We came into the pandemic at about 7 million. 
that was a super strong economy. This is going to be a severe headwind for the Fed, folks. And you start tying in wages, man. We'll see where wages come in there tomorrow. Uh, but boy, get ready for it, folks. That's out at 830 tomorrow. The jobs report is projected to show another healthy wage gain. Average hourly earnings expected to rise 0.4 percent from a month earlier and 5.5 percent from a year earlier, that comes on the heels of data out last week that showed private industry wages and salaries. 1.3% in the first quarter was ADP. Even so, inflation continues to outpace wage growth for most people. I'd say that's putting it lightly. Uh, so you have a con economic research director at Jobs website, Indeed, Nick Bunker, not familiar, but nonetheless, said, well, the labor market is not cooling, the temperature isn't rising like it was last year, and that could mean a leveling off in wage growth. A lot of analysis out here, folks. We get to find out some of that data tomorrow morning at 8.30. Uh, this gentleman expects private sector wages, which were up 5% in the 12 months through both December and March, will hold in that vicinity in the near term. Now, you just heard the expectation is for what? What do we say? 5.5%, okay? We get that data tomorrow, and watch out, folks. My expectation is it's still going to be pretty hot. And we're dealing with some pretty decent comps for right now as we get later into the year. All right, inflation may have already peaked in the U.S., and we're going to find out, but we are dealing with some lofty comps. If we're still dealing with year-over-year -year numbers like we're dealing with right now, even on the core aspect of things, okay, because Chairman Powell was talking about, you know, food, and energy they may persist for some time they're more volatile he's already focusing on the core number okay i heard it in the press conference last night <clears throat> we're dealing with some lofty comps as we come into late later in the year and that is the expectation that maybe we have peaked once we get late in the year you're dealing with comps where late in 2021 we already had inflation raging so if inflation is raging late in 2022 that means you're compounding on two years of, what is it, five, six, seven, eight percent. Folks, you do that two years in a row, you're talking about almost a 15% rise across the board for inflation if you do seven to eight percent two years in a row. But that's what will be happening if we come into the end of the year. We get some important data tomorrow. You're seeing some volatility ahead of that number today. You could call it a relief rally yesterday, folks. But as I've been talking about, be careful in a market that is this volatile, just like that. The NASDAQ gives up 300 points on the session. We're down to the 50% of the entire run we had higher yesterday. And you're just back right now to where we were trading at at 2 o'clock yesterday, folks. You had the NASDAQ 13,231. We're trading 13,234. Forget the rally even happened from 2 to 2.30 and beyond. We're right back to where this market was at 2 p.m. Eastern time yesterday. Dow off 4.32. That's one and a quarter percent. S&P's off one and a half percent. Keeping in mind, folks, I've been talking about it. The level of uncertainty in this market with two-way trading like this, very, very scary in terms of what is possible when you have this level of uncertainty. Uh, very indicative of some possible pullbacks that are harsher than we have experienced. Uh, not many people probably would have thought that by 18 minutes into the trading day today, you'd have the NASDAQ negative three 100 plus points. I'm sure some did in the den as they were calling it quite the bear market rally yesterday, right? Um, but yeah, quite a give back, folks. Uh, be careful in this market. The moves are pretty vicious. We jump over to the gold contract. You catch your bid up to 1910. We're back to 1897 right now. You had a high last Friday in 1921. You're talking about $70 to the downside in gold and $60 to the upside in gold, all in the span of six days. Can't overstate what's happening in this market. We jump over to the 10 year. Right back to the lows, right? Yeah, we had a spike low for a moment down to 230, but you're talking about yields above 3% right now, above 3%, okay? Yields rising from the Fed meeting yesterday, okay? We came into 2 o'clock at about 118.15. We're trading at 118.12, and that is almost a full point below where we were trading at last night, a full point below where we were trading at last night. What happened to... Uh, the Fed appearing more dovish. Well, what happened is, folks, is that, yes, yeah, 75 is off the table, but 50 is on the table for at least two meetings. Chairman Powell said two meetings. 
I would put the term at least in there, depending on how we go. Uh, thanks, Peter. We got CPI Tuesday, PPI Wednesday. There's no letting off the brakes, folks. Non-farm payrolls on Friday. We get a reprieve from Mother's Day out there with no action. We come back and it starts all over again next week, folks. And before you know it, we're going to be doing it all over again uh, for the month of May before you know it. Because guess what? When we get CPI data next Tuesday, you're already talking about the 10th of the month. Okay? Before you know it, we're going to be dealing with some economic data one to two months down the road. Because right now, okay, the market has a little less certainty. That's what it liked yesterday. A little less certainty, right? 75 is off the table. Okay, some people could unwind their hedges was part of that acceleration. But man, we got some uncertainty in a month or two. Because Chairman Powell said 50 basis points for the next month or two. Well, what happens in 60 days? We all get to find out. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down 7-0, 70 points at this point. You're talking about 1.7%. We're below the 50% acceleration. NASDAQ 100, 13,200. How about giving up 350 points from where we were last night in the Dow off 435 right now? We jump to that 10-year. You're talking about a 10-year down 27 ticks. We're almost going to be at the lows that we had for the spike coming into Chairman Powell's press conference. It's not stopping, man. You jump over to talk about the yield that we're at. Say goodbye to 3%. We're at 3.04%. Just that quick, folks. There is so much going on in this market right now. Uh, programming note, our man Teddy Kegstad, uh 
We talk to him every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. He does an outstanding job talking about Forex. He's been calling crude with a big crude bull for a while. Crude right now up another $2.85 at one ten. So next Wednesday, folks, if you enjoy those Teddy Kegstat segments every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, he's going to be hosting the whole hour next Wednesday. So I'll be out next Wednesday. Teddy going to be taking over for the whole hour. Uh, I might be watching that program myself, man. That's uh, May 11th. Wednesday, May 11th. Put it on your calendar. Teddy will be hosting the hour. I'm looking forward to that. I'm sure the listeners will as well. He's got an outstanding uh, plethora of knowledge, we'll call it, in that market. So I'm sure he'll be talking a little bit of crude, man. He had quite a call yesterday for crude. And boy, just even from where we talked to Teddy yesterday, let's find it on the chart. We were chopping around about 106 yesterday. We're trading at 111 almost on the crude contract right now. Boy, it's going to be quite a market, folks. As we say... As our man Basil Chapman says, the day is young. We're 25 minutes into the trading day, and you got markets not stopping right now to the downside with the S&Ps trading down 72 points. Uh, yields, the most remarkable thing going on right now, as you are actually below where you were trading at coming into that press conference. Yeah, you know, you're talking about two ticks off of the lows. But folks, keep in mind what Chairman Powell revealed during his press conference. OK, 75 basis points was totally in play. People had hedges on to prevent from that. Right. That was taken off the table. Yeah. The market's like, you know what? Uh, we're hiking. We're hiking for some period of time. 50 basis points is coming probably at the next two meetings now at least. And guess what we got tomorrow? We got wage data. We got jobs data. We got a job economy that is so strong, folks, that is going to be a continual influence on rising wages, inflationary tendencies. And the market's talking. It's squawking, folks. Pay attention. We got the S&Ps down 75 points. It's a wild one as usual. And let's check out the VIX as we wrap things up. VIX 2710. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me, folks. Live programming all day. Basil, Larry, Fast Market with Kevin Hinks, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien at three. Have a great one, folks.